President Wilmington, Chancellor Martin, Dean Agavo, faculty, proud parents, guests, friends, and of course, the entire graduating class of 2018. Thank you for the honor of inviting me here today to celebrate with you. Thank you also, Paige, for those memorable words. Class of 2018, congratulations. <laughs> 26 years ago at the University of Wollongong, outside of Sydney, I stood in your shoes listening to a couple of commencement speeches. And I thought, why is this a commencement? I'm at the end of my studies. I have arrived. I've worked so hard. But what I quickly realized was that while this was a day that old doors closed, many new doors were opening. And they will now also for all of you. As you commence the next stage of your careers and your lives, quite frankly, make no mistake, through your careers, many, many doors will open for you. And not by sheer luck, but by your hard work, your experiences that you pick up along the way, and your perseverance. The fact that you're graduating today shows that you can apply yourself, that you can think critically. Skills you will need to continue building throughout your experiences moving forward in life every single day of your lives. This world has problems we need to run to, as you heard earlier. And you now have a shared responsibility to remedy some of the wrongs before you. This is the true cost of your careers, of your degree rather, and your reward. You get to change the world. Today I hope to be able to leave you first with some values that have served me well and hopefully save you some time. It's taken me 26 years to figure some of these out. And second, uh, a little insight into the changing workplace you're about to inherit so that you can, you can decide which doors to choose to walk through. So, values. Trust. Trust is the single most important value you will need to exhibit in your careers moving forward. You have already worked out that trust is critical in your personal lives. It's the basis of all your relationships already. The same is true for your professional lives. Think of trust like a bank account. By performing consistently, being authentic, being accountable, respectful, and keeping your commitments, you make small but very frequent deposits into this bank account. And saving always pays off. You'll get great satisfaction for one, and results if you have a trust account surplus. And lean in. Trust others until they show you that you shouldn't. Number two, be brave. Courage. You've heard many times, I'm sure, fortune favours the brave. And in your professional lives, I can tell you it does. And also remember that you get what you fight for, not what you deserve. I'm sure you would all deserve the very best in life. But if you don't, raise your voice. Uh, also put your hand up, but raise your voice. If you don't fight for what you believe you need, then you're just not going to get it. Also remember to ask for forgiveness rather than for permission. Be kind as well. Compassion, goodness, thoughtfulness, decency and conscience. You don't know what struggles other people are having and you don't know what struggles they've had or in the middle of having. And so make sure that you are full of humility. Make sure that you give back to community, give back to family and give back to colleagues. It's not about the money in terms of giving back, it's about time, which very quickly you're going to realise is your most valuable resource. I heard earlier that uh, you had nothing but time as you were students, but you will find very soon that uh, time is going to be your most valuable and scarce resource moving forward. Remember to forgive others, but also forgive yourselves. Be smart. Build your brain. You've come out of, uh, you're about to graduate having built your brains. Continue to build your brains. Never stop learning. Learn from every single experience, not just the good, but the bad. Life is not a popularity contest. Trying to get everybody to like you in, if you choose corporate life or in your, in your work life is often going to be a sign of mediocrity. And uh, you know, you're going to avoid making the right decisions if you try and make everybody like you. And no matter how much you're told there is no stack rank, we don't measure you, we don't compare you, the reality is there is. 
You yourselves have preferences in food, in what you watch on the television, in people, in activities, in, in world sports. I'm sure, I'm hoping all of your supporting teams during the World Cup make your life count. Leveraging your ecosystem is also critical. Relying on one mind alone, your own, is rarely enough. It's just not going to be enough. You need others to challenge you and to help you grow. And the best qualified people are those who are different to you. You cannot overstate the importance of diversity, especially in this day and age. Your career will involve engaging with people from all backgrounds. To be successful, your mindset needs to mirror that exact profile. Be it race, gender, religion, nationality, ability, sexual orientation or generation, like my older generation. There's still a long distance to go and it falls to you, this entire class here, to continue that work, pushing for a fairer, more equal, more inclusive and better world than the one we've inherited. Finally on values, I'll talk about leadership. You're not gonna find leadership on an organizational chart wherever you work. It's about being able to create and clearly articulate a vision that motivates and inspires others to engage and deliver on that vision. And you don't have to be the CEO, the president, the head of the division, the head of the country to do that. There are several critical qualities for true leadership, which I'm sure many of you have already started to build. They include in no particular order, trust, which I spoke about earlier, integrity, confidence, effective communication, commitment, empathy, and inspiration. Work on these qualities, both in your professional and your personal lives. And I promise you, you will, not <clears throat> you will not fail in anything you choose to do. So values are critical in a world of change. And right now, there's a lot of change going on. We also heard that earlier. If you block out the noise of the 24-hour news cycles and never-ending streams of social media, I'm sure you're all uh, a great part of, and the day-to-day -day stock market and, and foreign exchange fluctuations we see, especially in our business, you're going to find some unstoppable forces occurring in the world right now. At HP, we call these mega trends, and these will define your lives and your careers moving forward over the next 30 to 40 years. There's a saying that success comes down to being the right person in the right place at the right time, and if there's any truth in that, you'll want to align around these mega trends very, very quickly. You'll position yourself for growth, for opportunity, and for success. The first is rapid urbanization. Over the past 10,000 years, humans have developed a preference to congregate in cities, in groups. Of the world's 8.6 billion people by 2030, 8.6 billion people, 70% will live in cities. A megacity counts as 10 million people, pretty much 50 Genevas. And our planet will have grown from 10 megacities when I was in university in 1991, that's a long time ago, to 41 megacities in the next 30 years. Half will be in Asia, but Africa too will have a great number of these megacities. If Lagos in Nigeria, for example, continues on its current growth trajectory, by the turn of this century, it will be the first city in the world to top 100 million people. And you can imagine the challenges that come with having that many people living that close together. And of these 8.6 billion people in 2030, 1.4 billion will be over the age of 60. So the demographics are also evolving. We call these people silver spenders, of which I will be one. I'm already silver, but um, I will be in that age group very shortly. And these silver spenders will live longer, and they're going to use technology to improve their lives. At the opposite end of the spectrum are millennials and Gen Z, or today's millennials and Gen Z, which are so very different to anything that's come before us and before them. An Uber and Netflix generation that's focused less on ownership and more on experiences, on mobility, and on connectivity. And that's a good thing because we cannot go on consuming the way we do now. We heard earlier about the example of food and, and how much bread is wasted. Next is a force so powerful that even an escalating trade war can't unwind, and that's hyper-globalization. The internet kick-started this, and I was alive when the internet was born, and spurring it on now is mobile technology. One of the upsides of hyper-globalization is that it's created enormous opportunity 
by providing access to huge markets, the world has become a smaller place. Last year, for example, over 140,000 startups, and those of you thinking about a startup should take note here, over 140,000 startups were launched in emerging economies alone. It's only a short matter of time until the next Google, JD.com, Alibaba, or Facebook arrives, or the world's next great entrepreneur steps up. And finally, accelerated innovation is the third large megatrend. And I'm sure I'm not the only person in this room who's been left speechless quite frequently by the latest gadget that arrives, or what it's capable of. At times, it's difficult to keep pace, and I lead a tech company. Just 15 years ago, downloading media was largely illegal. VHS was the video format of choice, VHS cassettes. Um, and CD players had us all in all, CD players. Today, <laughs> one device in your pocket, or in your hands probably right now, can be your newspaper, your television. It carries all your music. It carries all your photos. You can make phone calls. It's also your personal assistant. You can converse with it. It understands a multitude of languages. It can, it can translate a multitude of languages. It can be a gaming console, a fitness manager, and so much more. And in 10 years, smartphones won't be 10 times more powerful. In 10 years, they're gonna be over a billion times more powerful. So if you look closely, the footprints of the future are already visible. We see it blending, and we see the blending of our physical and our digital worlds through technologies such as virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchains, autonomous vehicles, advanced robotics, and 3D printing. We're at the very beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. Not only will it boost productivity, efficiency, and sustainability, but it will make us question the very notion of what work looks like. In fact, children born this year and last year have probably got a, more, a greater than average chance of living to greater than 100 years of age. And now there is already talk about how many careers people can have. It's not one career, it's not one job, of course, but it could be two or three different, very different careers they have during their lives. And there's no crystal ball to tell us what jobs will and will not exist in the future, which will become extinct, or what skills you'll need to survive. But based on what you've heard today, my guess is that the human touch and creativity will come to the fore. What's more, in addition to sharing knowledge and skills, your educators have given you something incredibly valuable, the ability to learn how to learn. If you can reinvent and reboot yourselves in a changing world while living caring human values, our future, your future, will be very bright indeed. Today will be a, a day you remember for the rest of your life, so be sure to celebrate your achievements, the great friendships you've all made here, and to thank your loved ones and your educators for their investment, their time, and their faith in you. It's been my honor and my privilege to share it with you, and hopefully I've managed to compress some learnings of my last 26 years into this time today so that you can all choose which are the right doors for you. Thank you. The International University in Geneva hereby confers upon Nick Lazaridis the degree of Doctor in Letters Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you.